Oh, you guys, check her out. Queen Lola has grown up! The best of the best flamingos that after 40 years of Zudesia Zoo's flamingo breeding program has produced, Queen Lola has become an adult. And not only that, but when she aged up, she crawled out of the krill pool, which is going to be cleaned in just a second. Check this out. Keeper is literally coming here, literally cleaned it up. Don't worry, she's on it. But she came over out of the krill pool, flew in front of this mirror, played with the mirror, and then turned into an adult, which I think is so freaking hilarious. It's like she wanted to see how her new looks were. But she is the best flamingo that we have at the moment uh, with 75 size, 83 longevity. So she's going to live for a freaking long time. She has fantastic formility. I was merging the word fertility and immunity, but she has fantastic, fantastic fertility and wonderful immunity and quite a bit of appeal to her. Hopefully her rating will go up over time. I'm kind of curious, actually, in all this time of playing, I have not looked it up. Is there animal rating? Huh, so there's not a report on the animal rating over here. Maybe it has to do with lifetime stats. Species appeal and rating. Interesting. We'll see. We'll see over time. But anyway, Queen Lola has aged up and much is apparently happening today. Cobwebs in the attic. Oh, Eco has passed away of old age. Oh, we have hungry animals. Oh, geez. Lily, why are you at low welfare? Lily, get out of that spot and you'll be fine. Uh, yes, we did have Eco pass away of old age. We're going to have to spend some more time with our wonderful, our wonderful... Japanese macaques at some point and cobwebs in the attic has just had another Explosion of baby spiders, which people are so excited to see look at them They're more excited about the spiders than they are about my freaking like four pandas in a corner over there You people just because your little legs would be tired walking back there honestly Though I'm glad that they're excited about the spiders. Don't get me wrong. All right, let's come over to cobwebs in the attic and I think we have Lintel. Okay, we need to put a little marker so I know which ones. Lintel, you can stay. You actually have... Well, actually, who's my best? Huh. You know what? We might retire Lintel. Let's grab everybody from Cobwebs in the Attic. Since they're all here, and since we've learned that the... Yeah, all of them. All 17 Cobwebs in the Attic members. And since we've learned that these spiders, when they reach gold level, sell for 800 a piece, let's make sure that we have some really high quality spiders in there. So we have got a female right over here who's, ooh, I actually really love her name, Rosa Marie. And then we've got a male over here, 83 on his longevity, 67 fertility. Fertility 100 on Maria here, so we'll definitely put Maria in. And then what about this guy? 8367. 8367. All right, we'll choose these two. And we'll actually move these two back in. And we'll give them a new name in just a moment. Let's let a couple days pass just to make sure that we're doing that. And then let's come down. And we're actually going to trade all of these. So this is just from the babies. Oh, and we can't trade Lintel away. Lintel, don't you worry. So these are just from the babies that they had. <laughs> $6,594. We can pay for a new upgrade with that. And Lintel, I really love you, buddy. So I'm going to move him in here. Can we actually give Lintel like some sort of contraceptives? Because Lintel is uh, one of our OG little guys. Hey, Lintel. Oh my gosh, we can. <laughs> Lintel's now in retirement. Do you like that, guys? That is so freaking precious. I didn't know that you could actually like give your spiders contraceptives so that they wouldn't have more babies. But you learn something new every day and that's uh, that's pretty important. And we're gonna go ahead and name these ones. So we have Lintel. Let's go with, um, I kinda wanna name this Green Bean, but where are these guys located? In the attic. So if they're in the attic, Let's name them after things that you would find in the attic that you'd kind of forget about, like really old toys. So list of old time toys. I love that idea. Like complete list. No, no, I want like history's best toys. Um, in fact, actually, easy bake oven. Oh my gosh, Rubik's cube. 
<laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead. He, this guy's gonna be Rubik's. Rubik cube for the Rubik cube. So he's gonna be Rubik for Rubik's cube. And then we'll name the female Maria. I actually am going to name her uh, Wedding Veil. Vale. Because I like the idea that she loves to live up in a little, little wedding veil because she thinks it's the finest silk that she has ever seen. And she will hopefully have many, many healthy babies. So there. Those guys are taken care of. Uh, do we have any new challenges? Release to wild 12 of any habitat species in the wild. Well, we can definitely try tackling that in a little bit. Apparently a bunch of people are visiting. So let's go ahead and say hello to them. And then I'm going to show you guys this really freaking cool. I'm visiting again with my tire outfit. Where am I? Somewhere in there, the lady with the full body tiger outfit is me. And I'm looking at the flamingos and the mandrels right now. Anonymous zoo owner is visiting as well. Oh, one of the, like, the first ladies I've seen. Oh, another lady. Yay. We actually have two people. There we go. Excellent. Very nice to see. Uh, Olivia, the burrowing, giant burrowing cockroach, uh, is having some issues. Where is the cockroach? Where are the cockroaches located? Cockroaches in the shed are dealing with some issues. And Carlos, he's our slow poke. He's had some issues with his enrichment in the past. Um, he is, should be okay. He'll get there. He's got tons of food. He just takes a minute to kind of work his way over. All right, we'll take care of Oliver here in the cockroaches in the cupboard. Is this the garden or the cupboard? In the shed, that's right. All right, and then cobwebs, cobwebs. Oh, cobwebs in the attic. There's them. Then we have a whole bunch of, oh my gosh. The shed is getting overpopulated. <laughs> Cereal, I'll leave you there. Holy cow! I didn't realize we had this many in the shed. <laughs> um, there we go. We'll deal with the rest later, but I can't believe we had that many. However, this is a great thing, my friends. Can I quick trade all of them? Nice. This is a great, great thing because now we actually have some extra money for our new project. So you guys may remember last time we ended up expanding our wonderful panda shrine with the addition- <gasps> Yes! Win-Win is expecting offspring! You guys! It's a miracle! Win-Win is expecting offspring. Let's get the keeper in here to clean up after them. But we're gonna have a panda baby! There's actually going to be a baby panda happening over here. That makes me so excited. So Win-Win is going to have at ats first child. <gasps> even though we ended up at at he's 10 now. And even though we ended up with two elder, like, female pandas that he is also just like taken in because they're elder females. We have Mama and Kiki and Kiki didn't get pregnant in time. So it's just Win-Win who could get pregnant. But at least Mama is able to enjoy her life as a retired princess of pandas relaxing here in our Zudesia Zoo. And hopefully we can bring many, many people over to admire all of them soon. I'm still so annoyed that people are not lining up left, right, and center to come see my pandas. Like this is this is criminal in my opinion. I'm gonna actually remove that. I'm gonna move this cooler. And let's let's even expand this here. Can I edit the barrier? Let's see. We're gonna come in and edit the barrier to make it one-way glass so people can see more. Legend the flamingo has just had some offspring. I mean, people should be able to see my pandas fine. They're just silly, silly people and don't want to come and see them just yet. But we're going to change that soon, friends. This is really hard to get to. You have to walk a heckin' long way to get all the way over to this zoo, uh, this side of the zoo. I will admit that. See, you have to start. So you have to like arrive at the zoo. You have to walk all the way past the wolf habitat, which by the way, no longer is covered in litter and being vandalized left and right. You have to go all the way past here. You have to go all the way around this side of a panda habitat, turn, go up this, this bridge, come down, 
Turn, turn, go past all these crowds. Walk, 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 walk. There's nary a bench in sight. Walk, 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 and then come down to see my pandas. Too much, absolutely too much. And so to honor the wonderful at, -At and to make sure that we are able to have people appreciate him, we have begun the great digging. I have indeed dug a heckin' big hole over here, and I have finally, finally, finally made it so that most of the staff facilities are out of sight. Will people be upset over here? Not anymore! Look at this, friends. Look at this. We have actually moved the majority of the facilities underground so people will no longer be able to be quite so cranky. And it will also give our staff somewhere where they can go to relax. As you can see, they're already headed down here and to pick up anything that they need in order to do any cleaning. But look at this. This is our very first little staff underground tunnel. I freaking love this. We're gonna be making some underground tunnels for our guests, absolutely for sure too. And we are also going to make it so that hopefully we will have these scattered around the entire zoo. I think this is really the way to do it. A tricky, tricky part is that people can still actually hear the water treatment and transformer, which is a little bit of a pity. We might sink those even deeper into the ground in the future. But I love this idea so much. I think I'm actually going to make tunnels that burrow through most of the entire zoo. And we, ha we can't make too many of them because at my best, this is like how big the entrance to the tunnel system ends up having to be. But if we make even just a few of those spots, like one over here, one over here, one over here, one over here, scatter them around the zoo, then that's the only place that the surface footprint of our staff facilities would take up, which would be so much less than these huge complexes that are kind of not really nice to look at. Some of them are fine. Like some, the guests don't really get mad about this one. Like, they don't really get upset about the facilities in here, but they do not like the sound, absolutely hate the sound of the water purifier and the generators. So we might sink those deep into the ground where people can't hear them. And then instead of having to have multiple entrances, we might just have our mechanics kind of like live in the tunnel system underground. And if it's interconnected, they should be able to get to everything okay and maintain it okay. Um, and we might just have one mechanic whose job is basically just to maintain those things instead of do anything with the habitat tops so he could just stay underground forever. He would be a little mole. A mole mechanic. That sounds wonderful. Uh, oh, this thing we could probably sell. There we go. So that's the new plan and I think it's going to be fantastic and it's also going to let me make a really nice new area where we can have a bridge come from this side. I want to make a bridge that will let you look into the panda habitat a little bit better and then come down over here and get over to this side of the zoo without having to walk the whole thing so far. So that's the plan. I'm pretty excited about that and we're also going to relocate the zookeeper hut because I actually realized, I think we should put it, well, should we do that? No, I was going to put it in the center of the habitat and I realized that's a terrible idea because I'd have to have a path cutting through my beautiful, glorious habitat and that's not happening. That's not habit happening. <laughs> Sorry, that was way too easy to try to make that pun. But thankfully, the nicer looking, I think, the facilities and the further back you set them, the less guests seem to care about them. So we're actually going to move this one over a little bit. And if you look, the guests won't really care about this large keeper hut. Like, it's not going to make them quite as upset to walk past. They will care about these transformers and the water thing, but we'll, we'll potentially move that in the future. And I wanted to show you guys with this last building how I moved all of them. The easiest way is to just hit X to throw it underground. Then you have to trick the camera into going down. Come on, tunnel. Come on, tunnel. Oh my gosh. Normally it works fine. All right, there we go. We could also do this by grabbing move, scrolling yourself into the tunnel. And once it catches you, you can just kind of wiggle down here and then you can scoot this around however you need. 
and set it wherever you think your mechanic might want to come and do a little bit of his workshop work. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put it right over here. Boom. And it automatically gets placed. And now when we look at it, you can see his spear is not going to go above the surface. And just like that, we have hidden all of those pieces away. And we should have more people coming to see our pandas. Just in time, because Win-Win is pregnant, which is so exciting. Okay, so the only place we need a staff path, really, and we can actually, like, move this and even put a shop inside of there in a little bit. Uh, but we do need, like, a path over here. And I'm actually going to shave off the edge of the wolf habitat right over here. So we're going to get rid of that side. Because we're going to move the whole wolf habitat pretty soon, too. That is absolutely happening because I am not 100% happy. We'll move this. Clearly, with what we have done with our wolves, we're going to be giving them a much, much better lifestyle upcoming. All right, let's get in here. And then, oh, oh, let's go ahead. Somebody is very unhappy. Oh, we have a roach exhibit we forgot to name, guys. So this is actually going to be, um, we'll name this one roaches in the bathtub there and then we'll just get all of those guys out really quickly holy canoodles all right we'll sort these guys later too oh yay win win's expecting i'm so excited uh cockroaches in the kitchen we probably want to go ahead and preemptively that's cockroaches in the kitchen i need to leave at least one male and then let's come over to in the shed. That's where they're unhappy. So biscuit and cereal. I think you two are the ones in charge of this area. And udon? I think biscuit and udon. Uh, yes, we'll leave those two. Okay. All right, does that make them feel, feel better? Did we take care? Yeah, now we took care of it. Jaja! Jaja! <laughs> if you're feeling overheated, Please remove yourself from that side. My pandas, they get really overheated in the summer months, but we're finally figuring out how to take care of them too. All right, and let's come over to these guys. Boom, bada boom. Ah, sometimes the quick trade, when you can like quick trade, select all and quick, quick trade them works and sometimes it doesn't. All right, come on. There we go. Udon, I should probably go ahead and keep you for just a minute, just because you're a really good cockroach. There, all right. So let's carry on with this while everybody else is carrying on with life. My keepers are going to freak out for just a minute, though. So actually, we'll pause. I just realized, wait a second, they're actually going to panic because they're going to be like, oh, I can't reach anything. I can't reach anything. All right, well, we're going to clear that away. This staff path cleared away. Just leave little little pieces of it. Whoops. There we go. And I want to make like a really nice looking log wood horizontal path that has railing. And should we do a curb again? Maybe we'll do railing and path supports. And I want to make it bigger. Maybe eight. Eight wide? Okay, all of your other paths need to just go away for a minute so I can focus on this new path. Can I put it on the middle of nowhere? I cannot just yet. Okay, here we go. So eight wide should do it? Maybe, maybe 10 wide. Yeah, I want it to be 10 wide. So we're gonna make it 10 wide. It's gonna connect up dramatically right there. Okay. And then what we're gonna do, my poor little keeper is gonna have to just be patient for a minute. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to lift it up. And how high is this? That's that's about where I want them to be able to like look over the exhibit. Oh, does it need to be a little higher and then they could actually like walk over the exhibit somewhat? Ooh, that's tempting. And then can I make it up again? Okay. And then down. And 
let's carry on. I love this. Okay, we'll, we'll actually swing it through a little bit. So you can see inside the panda exhibit. And then swing around. And then actually don't want it to go back down to the ground. What I want is I want it to connect up. Get a little smaller, but I want it to connect up with this path. Oh, I'm so excited. We might actually have people start using these. Okay, go to eight. And then I think, yeah, this path will be just as high. Okay. We're gonna clear this away from the yonder days. And then we're gonna actually clear these away and even like lift it up. Swing this around. Well, actually, do I want to snap this to a grid? Okay, I'm still learning the paths. The only thing you can really do is just do your best to there. Let's make that nice and straight. And then let's deselect from the grid. And then we'll have these two connect up in just a minute. Let's transition from this to this, like so. Beautiful, beautiful. We'll even take out this rustic path right here. And then let's make the path maybe six wide over here. And we'll have it lead up. Hmm, and then this one needs to be a little smaller if we want that to work. Down to four. Boom! Look at that! That is so much nicer already! <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that! I love that so much! And then we can come in and what we do is we can say, okay, we want to keep this at eight. So I do actually want to keep that at eight. And I actually think that it would be really nice, yeah, to do some aligning to grid fixing of some of the former paths we've made. So maybe I can connect that and that. And just kind of push people subtly, go that way to the pandas. All right, so there's that. And then the other thing is we need to connect up a couple more little paths. So let's have a small, there we go, a small path over here that's gonna go down on stairs and lead you to this spot. Which will hopefully, like, we can start seeing people go up there. And then you may be wondering, how will the staff possibly be able to reach where they are supposed to go? Let's actually do, like, a little tiny log round path right here. And go down. Oh, it works! And now we've connected the staff up to that spot right there. And we can even have a little log here. We'll actually do like a little tree bark path. They'll come off here and run under the bridge. There we go. Two. Can we get the, okay, we might have to move the habitat door. That's fine. But it'll run under the bridge to the habitat door. And we need to actually move the habitat door now. Which is a little spooky. Can I do that? Yes. Boom. Look at that. And then we can have another path come out through here. Just a cute, itty bitty little, little like tree bark path. And then we'll move this keeper station even further over into the little corner where we will surround it in a little bit with bamboo and nobody will be any wiser and then up here can i actually put a shop up here we could even make a little section for like a shop which would be so freaking cute there we go oh this makes me happy you guys look at that We've done it! We have done it! We have hidden the staff things away. Let's check out what guests would think about this area now. <gasps> We've even lifted them above the sound of the generator with the bridge. I totally blanked on that even being possible. Yes! 
Yes, this looks so much nicer already. The changes are coming, the changes are coming. And to celebrate, I actually do want to put in a new exhibit over here somehow and somewhere so that we'll be able to celebrate with some new animals. I'm thinking of Bongo. I'm gonna double check that we have Bongo. I may be thinking about a different like hoofed antelope creature, but I'm thinking it'd be really fun to look out on a field of Bongo and to maybe even have a little path where people could come down and maybe have a little wander through a forest and get a chance to look at them too. So yes, huzzah! Let's see who uses this first. I wanna see if anybody like will step on this bridge. Do we have any takers? Also the mandrels are fighting. We should not have the mandrels fighting. All right, because their sun has once again grown up. That happens. That very much happens when the suns grow up. All right, mandrel king wants to be the only mandrel king, so we're going to put their sun away. There we go. And let's come back over. Come on. Who's going to be the first taker? <gasps> it's one of our vets! Vet Mullen! Vet Mullen, she is the first one using it to wander through here. You can get a good upper view of the pandas from here now. I'm so happy. This looks so cool. We've got people walking up top here now. They're so tired, I don't blame them. That Mullen, very first one enjoying this new path. <gasps> here we go, here's the winner. Winner Gaston, welcome. We're gonna rename you. He is the winner, you guys. So this is actually going to be, dun, 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 this. Oh my gosh, I can't rename him. Curses. All right, never mind. I can't rename him, but we are definitely going to set things up so that uh, he can just relax and hopefully we'll look at the things that he wants and then we will try to solve his desires and, and make life just happy and wonderful. So, all right, guys. I'm so happy with this. When Win is pregnant, you now have this really cool elevated path to be able to walk over so you can work your way towards the back of our zoo. I think things are going to really start looking up. I really do. But all right, if you guys could, do please leave a like for our wonderful new path and our new staff solutions. We're getting closer and closer to this place looking like the zoo of my dreams that it is. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, Stay curious, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.